Once you have verified the patient's identity using two identifiers such as first name, last name, or date of birth, place your patient in a supine position with their head settled in the head holder and their arms resting along their body. Situate the intersection of the inner axial laser light and the lateral laser light on the tragus. Make sure that the longitudinal laser light is placed on the median sagittal plane. Remember to close the doors of the examination room in accordance with radiation protection rules and perform proper hand hygiene. Select your patient from the work list, then click on Patient Selection. Verify that the pre-filled information is correct and fill in your patient's weight and height. Finally, choose the appropriate protocol. Check that the patient's position on the table matches the one indicated. Note here, patient's orientation is head first. After checking the scan parameters, click on Confirm. On the keyboard, move the table and launch the acquisition when the buttons flash. Repeat to obtain a lateral scalp view. Click on Next Series. Place the slices box from the frontal sinuses to the top of the mediastinum to include the entire parotid artery from its trunk. Another option would be to only include the internal carotid artery from the bifurcation. Here we will be performing the latter. Because this is an angiography, scanning should occur in the direction of the blood flow and should start at the mediastinum. Click the Smart Prep icon to check the injection bolus monitoring settings. On the right screen, place the position of a control slice for bolus tracking. This is usually positioned at the neck under the mandible. In general, a 10 to 12 second monitoring delay is selected to obtain at least one control slice before the arrival of the contrast agent. Verify the consistency of acquisition parameters, which are often pre-configured. Check the reconstruction boxes. Typically, you will need a reconstruction with a smooth filter and thin overlapping slices of at least 20 to 30 percent to ensure sufficient quality on post-processing and volume rendering. Before continuing, Check that the predicted dose is consistent with the diagnostic guideline values. On the keyboard, move the table and begin the scan when the buttons flash. Before clicking Confirm, program the injector. The volume to be injected is chosen based on the vascular time to be studied. Here, the vascular time of the supraaortic trunks is about 20 seconds depending on the injection rate. Try to have sufficient or significant injection flow to obtain a superb enhancement of the supraaortic trunks. If the patient's venous access allows it, use a catheter with a sufficient gauge size to get a high injection rate in order to gain superb vascular enhancement. Make the control slice. Click on Monitoring Phase. Start the injection and acquisition at the same time. On the control slice, attention should be paid to the arrival of the contrast agent in the carotid artery. Click on Phase Acquisition to start the acquisition at the specified time to achieve excellent vascular enhancement. Check for the absence of breathing or motion of the patient on the acquisition. After clicking End Exam, remove the patient's perfusion and escort the patients or request transport for them as needed. Be sure to give your patients post-examination instructions per department protocol. 
You can perform secondary reconstruction in MIP, maximum intensity projection, after removing the bone for the vessel study and for calcifications. Volume rendering and bone mask may be requested by vascular surgeons prior to surgery. Thanks for watching. For more great clinical content and special offers on CE credits, follow us on socials.